Hello everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and we are live here from Gaithersburg, Maryland and I am just waiting on my computer to update here. Give me a second so I can see who's in the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Make sure I have my computer muted. All right, thanks for being patient with me here. waiting 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 for these ads and thank you all for your patience and for allowing those ads to play when you can because that really does help me a lot in the long run and let's see do we have let's see I don't see any comments yet which is fine um, I just wanted to wish you all a wonderful good Friday um, probably one of the highest holidays in our our you know, Advent calendar, Christian calendar. Um, hey, Laura, thanks for joining me. She's my first comment today from Ohio. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. I just want you to know you've been in my thoughts and prayers and um, thinking of you all. I know at home, uh, having a little more time on your hands and hopefully you're safe at home and not at the hospital fighting this virus. But um, anyhow, um, hey, Tammy, thanks for joining me today from Oregon. Wow, that's a long way. Um, actually, I was, I was in Oregon, I guess about two years ago for a CGOA conference. Wonderful time there. Really enjoyed meeting the folks. I kind of wished I could have seen more of your area, though. I flew in and saw a lot of the beautiful mountains there, but didn't really have time. I was there busy teaching, and I love that. Hey, Sue. And we have Catherine Alexander. I need to get my glasses on now. Denise from New Jersey. And hey, Wendy. And let's see who else from Wyoming. Wow. And Holly Loves Crochet is in our group chat. Kathy from Ontario. Jan, thanks for joining us. I think my computer must have just caught up all of a sudden. Um, we have... Vanessa, I hope I'm saying that right. Hello, thank you. That's a really cool name, by the way. And, and Mar Marcia or Marcia from Massachusetts. Please forgive me, guys, if I don't get this right. And um, and Janet, thank you for joining us. And uh, Leanne, Marksburg, Maryland. Hey, neighbor. And we have Swati in the chat. Hey, Swati, thank you for your kind words throughout the week. Um, she's from LA. She says, "Stay still safe at home and lucky to be able to work from home." Amen. I'm still crocheting during meetings to keep me calm. Good, good, good. Sorry, my, my computer is buffering a little bit. I apologize for that. We have pretty high winds going on right now here in Maryland, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. And we have uh, Chandra from, from Ontario. Thank you for joining us. And Linda from Portland, Maine. Um, alias North Carolinian. Ha ha, that's cool. Um, and we have... Mirella from Egypt. Wow, thank you for joining us. I wish I could, you know, see your country at some point. That would be fantastic. Let's see, who else do we have here? Uh, Sherry from Nebraska, a big beginner. Well, welcome, Sherry. You are welcome. We have a ton of, I think a, a lot, I should say, of beginning projects. And in case you missed it, this is our latest beginning project for you beginners who are just new to crochet. I promise you this is an easy, fast project. Um, if you ever need any videos for absolute beginning stuff, I've got a playlist for you. So just go to my home channel and you see a lot of topics across the top. Hit playlist and just look for anything that says beginner. And I do it for right and left handers, okay? So I don't want anyone to feel left out ever. Uh, let's see, I'm getting behind here. Marilyn from Kansas, thank you for joining us. And Sweet Susie. And this is Pet Mim from Greece. Wow, my goodness, we are doing a geography lesson today. Thank you, guys. I hope you are safe there in Greece. Um, really looking forward to seeing Greece. I might actually get to do that at some point soon. Um, Jean from Maine. And Shirley um, from Michigan, it looks like. Wow, thank you for joining us. And I love Loopy Crochet and Treasures. That's a cool name of a channel. I'll have to check out your channel sometime. And Deborah from Georgia. Steve from Langley, British Columbia. Wow. And Rebecca 
from Kansas City. Um, Athena from Jamaica. Welcome, welcome. Send some of that sunshine up to up to me, please. <laughs> we could we could use some of that warmer weather there, um, Athena. And Gail from Trenton, New Jersey. Hi there. And Linda. Um, Denise says, Happy Easter to all. Thank you, Denise. Yes, I want to wish you all a happy Easter. This is, you know, again, Good Friday, a wonderful, wonderful day in the Christian calendar. Um, Geneva, welcome. And um, is it Siti from, from Malaysia? Wow. Thank you for joining us all the way from Malaysia. And Shannon from Tennessee. I just had uh, my computer just jumped a bit. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Um, Shirley, yeah, Shirley from Monroe, Georgia. Uh, Judy Summer, thank you for joining us. Um, see, Shirley Carter says, take care also. I'm from Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire. Well, I'm going to mispronounce this. Good grief. Uh, in, in, I'll just say in England, Leicestershire, England. Welcome, welcome. You have a wonderful, wonderful country there, Shirley. I so enjoyed visiting, um, visiting that this past fall. Uh, and Roberta from Michigan, thank you for joining us. And Carolina Cruz, um, she says, Happy Easter to you and your family. Thank you so much, Carolina. Thank you. That means so much. It's going to be a very different Easter this year, much like the first Easter. A lot of, a lot of um, unknowns and I think going to have some good surprises too. Um, and Jean says it, uh, two foot of snow and still snowing. Oh, no. Keep it on your side of the border there, please, Jean. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, uh, and Rita from, from Jordan. Wow. Thank you for joining us, Rita. And Rebecca Marshall says she finally gets to watch live working from home. Yeah. A lot of you all are doing that, I guess. I know I'm working from home. Uh, that, that's where I always work, but it's just kind of weird that, um, my husband's here, which is wonderful. Um, uh, and my daughter too, you know, nobody's able to really go outside much. Um, sorry about the buffering, Denise. Uh, so you have Linda from Virginia, uh, Shirley, and let's see, Mar Marsha. Marsha says they have high winds in Massachusetts too. Yeah, I hope that this kind of blows through. We're supposed to get rain on Easter. I hope that's not true, but we'll take whatever, whatever, you know, God sends us, right? Um, and we have Joy from Canada. Um, Janet says high winds and snow showers in northern New Jersey. We'll take care, Janet. Uh, especially uh, you're in northern New Jersey, so you're probably near the, the New York City in that outbreak. I hope you're staying safe and staying inside. Um, I have a son in, in Jersey, but he's, I think, more in, um, it's really more Philadelphia than it is, is New Jersey. So, um, so far, they're, they're staying okay. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, let's see. Shirley Washburn says, have a beautiful Easter. God has blessed me with a, I guess, a shipped grocery delivery, so I will watch this later. Okay, good for you. Good for you. I guess a lot of y'all are doing that, getting your groceries shipped. That's kind of a different thing, you know, for us to think about, at least for me, but um, I love just picking out my fresh vegetables and fruits, you know. I don't don't like anybody doing that for me. Um, Marcia says, Maine got a foot of snow yesterday. Wow. Okay, Sweet Susie says she made, let's see, it jumped again on me here. Uh, I'm such a slow reader. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to miss anybody here. Um, Sweet Susie says, I made the primrose blanket. Love the pattern. Well, thank you. I'm glad that worked out for you. Um, it was just a real relax, relaxing thing for me to do. I actually have some of the same yarn um, by the Red Heart Stripes, I think is what it's called. And um, I have some in blue, like an aqua blue. And I think I just make a, might make another one. Um, we'll see. We'll see what I come up with. Um, let's see. Kendra wants to, let's see, let me back up a little bit. Uh, okay. Thank you for the well wishes, Sherry there. She's, she just likes the blanket and says, have a happy Easter weekend. Um, Kendra Lutz says, have you tried Bernat baby Marley? You know, I have not Kendra. I'll have to take a look at that whenever we can go back into the stores and look at it. Uh, I really like to feel and touch the yarn before I, you know, commit to things. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to make a note to take a look at that. Uh, and we have Dienche. I, I, I'm so sorry if I'm going to pronounce, must pronounce this, but um, a friend from Belgium. Thank you for joining 
the chat. I'm sorry, my, my linguistal, linguist, linguistal? Oh gosh, I'm showing my ignorance again, but my language skills aren't as sharp as they, as they could be. Um, always has been a struggle for me to learn how to pronounce words for some reason, but um, I do better with my hands and working that way than with language. Um, but thanks for your grace towards me in this. I know you all are understanding. Um, and Deb Sky is wishing, wishing us a happy Easter from Toronto. Thank you, Deb. And we have Jupe from Holland. Thanks for joining us. Good grief. We have so many people from so far away. And Shirley Davis from uh, Monroe, Georgia. I think I saw that before. Okay, uh, but Shirley, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and thank you, Heather, for your kind words there. And we have Francis Cox from Southern Italy. Francis, I hope your country's doing better. I, I believe it's taking a turn for the better from what the news people are telling us. So I really hope that's true for you. Hope you're staying safe. Um, and we have, is it Yuchi from Germany? Thank you, thank you for joining us all the way from Germany. Wow, another beautiful country in Europe. And um, Judy from Colorado. Thank you for wishing us all a great day and a happy Easter to you. Christine from Alaska says she's doing well, and I pray everyone else is too. Happy Good Friday and Happy Easter. Thank you, Christine. Well, on that note, I'm going to pause here. I just printed out um, probably my favorite um, Good Friday comic strip. Maybe some of you have seen this. This is by BC Comics. I'm just going to put it up here so that you can read it. Can you see that? I'll go ahead and read what it says um, to you. It says, one of the characters says, I hate the term Good Friday. And his friend says, why? And he says, my Lord was hanged on a tree that day. And then his friend says, if you are going to be hanged on that day and he volunteered to take your place, how would you feel? And his friend says, good says, have a nice day. <laughs> I just love that comic. Um, it's, it's so precise about what today is all about and just how, you know, our, our Lord um, Jesus dying on the cross for those who believe in him, of course, um, so that we wouldn't have to pay the penalty for our sins. I mean, how amazing is that? And, and that just, you know, having done many things that I totally regret throughout my life, uh, even every day at times, um, that is just such a good reassurance for me and um, a blessing that I hope I never forget and just love to be reminded of that every day. So for those of you who don't understand that, you know, email me. I'll be glad to talk more about you, uh, more about that with you. Um, it is just the one thing that I just... Um, live for you know it's that's just very special to me and um anyway i also wanted to um have a little shout out i don't know if if joni um joni is it joni trish okay get the glasses on silly okay joni trishler is in um is in the group chat but i got your beautiful thank you card this week thank you that that just thank you jen that really made my day and um was just a real blessing to to find you know to, to get to get a correspondence from from you all. It's just a reminder to me, you know, you guys are not stats to me. You're not just numbers on a, on a YouTube channel, but you're real people. And I just, I just love interacting with you. And, um, I just so appreciate your kind words. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have missed a lot of comments here again. Uh, let me, let me see if I can catch up from where I left off. Um, it's just so great to have all you all here. Um, Let's see, we have Sylvia from Canada. She says, hi, you are, hope, hope we are blessed as we are. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure, Suzanne. I just love, love doing this. We have Mardell from sunny Kansas. We'll send some of that sunshine our way with some warm weather, Mardell. That would be great. Um, so Denise, looks like they may have snow there in South Jersey. Wow. Um, let's see, we have... I love the Afghan. Where would that? Where did that comment go? Hey, Johnny. I see Johnny's in the chat. It's good to see you. Happy Easter. Um, and so you have Annalise from Pennsylvania. Says so it's shout out to you from Pennsylvania. Love your patterns. I truly enjoy crocheting. It's highly addictive. Oh yes, it is, isn't it? 
it's a great hobby to have, especially for pandemics and all, isn't it? Um, my heart just really goes out to all those people that are just bored to death at home and have no idea what to do. I mean, I just don't know what to tell people like that. Um, except pick up a hook and check out my beginning lessons in, in crochet um, or, or learn to sew or paint or something. I mean, with all this wonderful quiet time on our hands, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sorry that the, the, for the virus, I mean, that's, 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 that's a tr trial for sure. But um, being confined to home is not a big deal for me. This is where I live. This is where I work. Um, oh, Jan's asking, is there a pattern for the I love crochet filet picture? This, this picture back here. Um, there is, but that's actually owned by Crochet World magazine. So if, Jan, if you've subscribed to Crochet Magazine for a few years, um, it is in there. Or you can, if you, I think if you have a Crochet World Magazine subscription, you have access to all the past, um, all the past projects of the years prior. And it's in there. I'll, I can get, I'll have to remember to try to make a note to find out specifically Okay, so if you want to contact me with an email, just send me an email to bonniebay at me.com and, and we, I can get that specific information to you. I need to look it up. It's in one of the many magazines um, over the years and I don't remember which, which edition. All right, we have Emmeline from Switzerland. Oh, you're in one of our favorite countries, Emmeline. We just so love visiting you back in, um, back in October. Oh, um, my, my family often jokes about wanting to, to move there. It's just that they would never let me become a member because I don't, it would take the rest of my life to even begin to learn your languages, which are so beautiful. Uh, my Swiss German doesn't exist, and I know just bits and phrases of German, just enough to get into trouble. So, oh, that would, anyway, sorry to go off on that rant there, but um, uh, thank you for wishing us a good Easter. Um, let's see. Okay, um, Carla has a question. What is the difference in the yarn packs, the Eco Cotton and Eco Fusion? Okay, excellent question. I don't have those in front of me right now, but um, the Eco Cotton is 100% cotton. The Eco Fusion is a blend of cotton. It's like 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. Okay, so uh, I hope. The, the bamboo is going to have a little more drape. Um, this, this yarn already has a lot of nice drape to it, but um, the fusion, I'm told, feels even, well, it, I don't want to say better. It's different, um, but both of the yarns are, are excellent choices for this design. I'm going to talk about this in just a minute. I uh, just want to say hello to Gail from New Hampshire. Thank you for joining us, Gail and Carmen. Thanks for being in the chat. Um, okay, so, and Suzanne Cowan, okay. She's asking about the Granny Square. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute, Susan. That's the uh, Bonnie Bay Bon Bon Blanket, blah, blah, blah. Um, say that with a mouthful. I actually don't, but anyway. Um, okay, Jana is saying here that she's 30 minutes away from New York, um, and looks like her Pennsylvania daughter is an RN working in local hospital. Scary, haven't seen her in three weeks. Oh my goodness, Janet, I hope she's okay. Um, we will have to just continue to, to keep praying for her. If you all can remember to pray for, for Janet's daughter, I will try to remember to write that down as well. I'll, I'll review these notes once I go off um, and, and try to write some of these things down. Laura says she finally finished the colorful cables throw on her and she really enjoyed seeing the other the ones that others have made thank you Laura I had a blast putting that together um, putting that little slideshow there's a slideshow on my home channel um, it's just called a showcase of the colorful cables throw it's just a slideshow with some music behind it with all the the uh, Afghans that people like you sent in to me and um, I know there were more people working on it that, that, that weren't able to send in pictures but thank you to the like 80 some odd people that sent those in um, that was a lot of fun to put together. Just wanted to say hello also to um, Yvonne and Jan and Jen from North Carolina, um, Alice in Quebec. Um, Annalise says, I'm working on the cable stitch. Love all your patterns. Thank you, Annalise. Good, good. That's one of my favorites. And we see Patsy Weiss is in, this, is in the chat. 
Yes, yeah, she says it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen. Hi from Illinois. Yep, yep, that is true. Um, and we have Dan. I'm working backwards in some of these comments that I missed. Um, uh, da, da, da. It says, I just finished the heart blanket. Thank you for the beautiful pattern. Well, th you are so welcome from Belgium. Okay. Um, there is a pattern called the Aaron Hearts Throw. It's a free pattern from Red Heart Yarns. Are you courtesy of Red Heart Yards, which I guess is now inspiration since they purchased them and, and the company moved. Um, so let me see. Let me see if I can catch up again down here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, it says, hello, Bonnie. Are you, okay, it says, Mama, Mama B's Crochet Kitchen. Are you seeing snow flurries there too? They're having some in Baltimore. Okay, I'm looking out my window. If you see extra glare, it's because the sun, I have more space open and trying to get the natural sunlight in. I don't see any now, but I do see these dark foreboding looking clouds going by that, that might have snow in them. Um, that would be interesting to have a snow shower. It's it's kind of chilly out. That's why I'm wearing a, a shawl today because it's, it's a little chilly inside here and, and um, just so that you can hear me talk, I actually turn off the heat during the live broadcast. And yes, Bobby, if you're in the chat, I did put a sticker on my control so that I remember to turn the heat back on afterwards. Um, we have, let's see, Crochet Mama's in the chat. We have Tammy from Michigan. She says to be healthy. Tammy, yes, we need to do that. We'll definitely try. Um, let's see... I'm catching up slowly, guys. Um, so appreciate to see how you all are praying for each other, even in the chat as I read through this. Um, Charlene says, hello from O'Fallon, Missouri. Hope everyone is reflecting on the sacrifice given for all today. Please pray for my husband who is hospitalized with heart problems and pneumonia. No coronavirus. Thank goodness for that. All right, Charlene, you've got a lot on your plate, my friend. Um, I will definitely have to put you, I think you are on my prayer list already because the name sounds very familiar. Um, we will have to just continue to pray for him. Wow. Hang strong. Um, I just love seeing everybody. Some people love all of Loopy Crochet and Treasures is already indicating that they are praying. That's really cool. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Yes, Johnny, this is a solemn day for Christians. Absolutely. This is what makes up our faith, isn't it? Because if he didn't die and then raise from the dead, we would have absolutely nothing to celebrate. This is why we celebrate Christmas, is because of Easter, which is really cool. Um, Carolina says, Carolina, oh, it just jumped on me again. Sorry, guys. Uh... Carolina Cruz says, by the way, thank you for your mask pattern. It has been helping me doing, I have been help. Okay. I know sometimes it's hard to, to read the type in here. She's been making them for her family and friends. Yeah. And she said, don't listen to those toxic, negative people. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, um, what's really cool is, is this past week, I've actually, I, I put a little post on my Facebook page. I was having a little bit of a, kind of a down day of getting, getting a lot of negativity from people about this mask thing. It's, it's, you know, I know it was controversial from the get go because people don't always look past the obvious. They look at a picture and then boom, judgment, you know, um, if they had seen the video, they would see that there are actually two layers and a, and a, and a, and a place which forms a place for a filter, which is every bit as good as, you know, any of those other linen or, um, you know, kind you make out of fabric. In my personal opinion, actually, they're a little more comfortable. I actually made some yesterday with the fabric. Um, ah, I was gonna, hold on, I'll go get one for you. I'll show you. Okay. Okay, back again, sorry about that. But I made one. Ugh strings. I am so not a seamstress. <laughs> I made, I made some yesterday, but they have the Capitals hockey team, uh, material, which my daughter had 
And so I said, we are going to make use of this. So, so you know, I mean, these, these are fine. There's actually a, a video. If you just Google or, or go to YouTube, you, this will come up. This is one that's been viewed a bunch of times. Um, you know, and it's fine, but you know, the elastic around the ears, quite honestly, is not real comfortable. So um, I kind of like the yarn better. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but I am thankful, you know, for the person that put this up. And, you know, my daughter and I made, made a few, and it has a little... Um, a little pouch in the back where you can add, you know, you can put an additional filter inside here. So, I mean, if you're, you know, looking for that, I mean, it's on YouTube. If you just, if you just search face mask, it'll be one of the first two or three that pop up, I promise. Um, but anyway, there, there was a little bit of a controversy um, on this from the get go. And, and, and actually some crochet groups were, and some of you told me about this um, crochet Crochet groups are basically blacklisting um, designers who put any patterns or anything up for face mask, which is ridiculous. I mean, and guys, if you're in those groups, don't don't spend a lot of time with all the opinions. I mean, it is pretty toxic, and um, so I, I'm not intimidated by them. I, yeah, you know, I kind of like to go with truth more than opinion because opinion is like the weather. You know, it's good one day, bad the next. You just never know. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but but anyway. So and as it turns out, this week, um, as of starting Monday, um, I legally cannot go shopping at the grocery store without a face mask. I cannot go to any place that's public. Um, this is in Montgomery County, Maryland. So anybody from Montgomery County, if you go to the grocery store, you must have a mask. Um, so it's just kind of funny, and they're even recommending you know, the, um, this, the um, Centers for Disease Control is saying, yes, make your homemade mask. Well, obviously, because there's nothing else available. <laughs> and, um, and anyway, there's just been a lot of unkind comments, and I just want you to know that I'm not daunted by them and um, because I know what's true and what's good, and you know, why would I be intimidated by people who just like to rant, you know? Um, and just, just to tell you all, and you, you run across this too, I'm sure, there's a lot of loud mouth schnooks out there. Well, we don't have to listen to them, and but when we can be kind to them, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, you know, sometimes I got to really dig deep to be kind back, just to let you know. I'm human like you too, and, you know, I get mad. <laughs> and um, so I, you know, I, I try to respond to comments as much as possible, but Lately with the mask thing, I've had to just kind of take a breather, put it aside, because um, I feel my heart rate going up, which isn't a good sign. So I have to walk away from it and be reminded of what's true, what's real, and what's good. And then try to be kind, you know, even in the face of unkindness. But just want to encourage you, try to do the same thing, because I know on many different areas, a lot of areas that yeah, stuff like that can happen. And I'm sorry, guys, I didn't mean to get on my little preach there. But um, um, anyway, wow, we've got a lot here. I um, I missed a lot of comments coming in. Um, uh, I, I'll read Annalise's here. This is a great comment. It says, praise Jesus for another day of life. Amen. That's a good comment to transition with. Um, and thank you again, Carolina, just for saying about the pattern. I mean, a lot of you, I mean, at most 99 or I'd say 90, I'd say 90% 90 of the comments were very positive on the mask. But there was, you know, a 10% that just, whew, really angry, mean comments. So um, it was just, it was a good good practice for me um, that reminds me of, of one of the favorite pastors I used to listen to on the radio years ago. His name is Anthony Evans. He has a, a program that is very good. It's called the Urban Alternative, and I think he's out of Dallas, Texas. And he tells this story about getting stuck in traffic, and and people get rude, and they start honking their horns at you. And he said, "You know what that's called? That's called practice. Um, when it comes to you know loving your enemy or just even loving your neighbor, you know he just he just had such a great has has a great way of communicating truth, and um, so." Um, I guess I could even just thank those people for giving me practice. So for those of you who put in those mean comments or just kind of like to needle me here and there, thank you. That's given me practice to be kind in the midst of adversity. I need that kind of practice. Um, you don't have to keep up, but just to let you know, 
I'm thankful for the opportunity to practice loving those that I don't agree with. That's a good thing we all could use a good dose of on the internet these days. Agreed? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I said I wasn't going to preach, but then here I go again. Um, um, thank you, Jen. God is good. I mean, he gives me grace. What can I say? Um, without him, I, I would be cowering in a corner somewhere. Thank you for your kind words. Um, let's see. Emmeline says she's almost finished with her cables, colorful cables throw. She made it bigger and made some little changes to it. And I hope you won't mind. Oh, not at all, Emmeline. But I would love for you to send me a picture. I would love to see what you did. It's just so much fun to see what you all do. I know you all are designers and creators too. And, you know, that's, you know, we learn from one another for sure. Um, we have Arlene from New Mexico. Welcome to the chat. I hope you're still there. I know I'm kind of late here getting to the bottom. Um, Jacqueline from Los Angeles. Oh, another fun place to, to visit. Hello, Jacqueline. Um, and we have Patricia Holland from Westminster, Maryland. Hi, neighbor. Um, let's see. Oh, come on. Computer. There you go. And um, Johnny says it's in the 90s in South Florida. Ooh, I'm not so ready. I'm not sure I'm ready for the 90s, but wow, that sounds, that sounds kind of nice. Um, I was enjoying warmer weather in South Carolina, and then about a week and a half ago came home, which was great, but it's been cold. It's like we went from like in the 80s to in the 40s and colder at times. But um, hopefully, you know, the spring will turn into summer pretty soon. Uh, we have Monique from the Netherlands. Welcome. Um, it says, the Empty Nest Reborn Doll Nursery. Ooh, wow. It says, hello, I'm new. Just so, thank you for, for, for um, subscribing. Um, maybe we need to talk. I've got a bunch of dolls. I got to figure out what to do that were left by my, my late, um, my late mother. Maybe we can connect and find out how I can find good homes for these. Um, if that's something that you do, if you're into porcelain dolls, um, Holly loves crochet says, Bonnie, do you also knit? I do. I am not the most advanced knitter out there, but I do knit and I do have some um, some videos. If you just put knit in the search bar on my home page, you'll see some of the knitting videos that I have. And some are, they're all very basic. Okay. It's, it, they're designed to help teach crocheters how to learn continental knitting. And I'm really, really enjoying that. I never thought I would ever say that, but I am enjoying learning how to do that. Um, we have Kim from Montreal, Quebec. Welcome. Welcome. I love Montreal. I remember visiting there years ago. Um, and Carmen says, Happy Easter and God bless you. Thank you. From Mexico. We have Donna from Oregon. And see, Denise says, she's thankful that we are well enough to join Bonnie on this beautiful day. Thank you, Denise. Yes, I'm glad you can. Um, sorry, Patsy. Looks like Patsy's having trouble with her internet. Uh, might be the high winds if you're getting that there. And it looks like the, the Empty Nest Reborn Doll Nursery is from Tennessee. All right. And we have a movie buff babe. Hey, movie buff babe. I don't know if you knew, but our my administrator, um, Becky, is a big movie buff. Um, she's actually a cinematic arts major and history major, too, but she's really into movies. Uh, maybe you all can have a talk sometime. And we have Haim from Montreal and JoJo. And we have um, V Blue from Jackson, Mississippi. Thank you, Beth, for your kind comments. Yes, she says to stay home and stay safe. Absolutely. Um, okay, and Johnny says he's working on the Afghan now. Good, 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 John. Hope you like it. And you know, if you if you need any extra additional stitch help, I've got extra stitch videos if you need to look at them, but you're, you're, you probably are good to go. You probably have done all these before. And, um, hello, your work from Trinidad. This is, um, Bina Debar. Thank you for joining us. Wow. All these foreign places. That's so wonderful. Um, Monica says, I really like the track on your other channel. Thank you, Monique. Um, last week I mentioned that I actually started a new channel. It's, um, it's called Sapphire Freeway. 
Um, that's the name of kind of the group, but it's really just myself and another person on, on the synth. And um, it's, it's um, instrumental music. So um, I did a version of, of Wayfaring Stranger. If any of you want to look at it, I'm desperately needing um, subscribers and, um, and views because it'll be a while before that channel is monetized. It takes like, I think like a thousand subscribers and another thousand hours of views. And when you have a three minute video, it's gonna take a lot. But um, if you're interested in viewing, I'm going to be adding some music. I was hoping to add some Easter music this week, but it just didn't happen. Um, but I'll be adding music as we can here and there. Um, and that particular song is a Native American flute. It's a double flute, if that's something you're interested in listening to. Um, but thank you. I'm glad you, glad you like that, Monique. We had we had fun doing that. I actually recorded part of it in South Carolina, and then my friend Roger Hooper, um, he recorded the synth part in in Maryland here. So we kind of put it together on the internet, and um, voila. Um, so Michelle is joining us um, from Montana. She said that's a beautiful day here in Montana, but expects snow tomorrow. Happy Easter! Wow. Well, enjoy, enjoy your good day today. And we have um, Teresa from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Hello there. And Samantha from Massachusetts. All right, well, let me, let me go ahead and talk a little bit. Um, I'm gonna have to just um, see if there's any other questions here. Um, I don't know if, I think Becky will be able to be there. Um, well, um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the Bon Bon baby blanket, this blanket right here. Um, this is coming May 4th. I think I, I've mentioned that in the last two broadcasts. Um, good news and bad news. Okay, the good news is it's coming May 4th. I will have the pattern and, and the first video will be released then. I'm not, I think I'm going to make this into two videos um, because it is going to take you a long time. It's going to take you a while to get 42 of these squares made. So I don't, I know some of you can do that in a week, but I don't advise it just for the repetitive injury thing. I would be real careful about that. Um, but I do have a note from Good Loops Yarns. Okay, the good news is we have some kits available now. The bad news is there are only three. Okay, um, the links are in the video description. Um, and, and, and let me hear me out first. The note says, due to current world circumstances, stock is limited. Obviously, shipping internationally right now is a bit of a problem. Um, and this yarn does come from South Africa. Um, now, it is imported by Good Loops Company, and that's who I'm working with. And um, she has three kits put together. But there are other ways to do this with this yarn, okay? The kits are the ones that have... Uh, 42 bonbons or little samples of yarn that are 27, approximately 27 yards each. Now, there's actually a better way to do that besides these three kits. And this is what you can do. Um, you can buy the little balls of color. So instead of buying, you won't have to buy 42. So what you can decide is decide in the, the palette what colors you like and choose those colors and just buy the balls of this yarn. Now for a pack, you would get um, approximately 45 bonbons. You'd only need to use 42. And then you would get, um, let's see, hold on a second, let me read this again. And then you will need five 50 gram balls of the vanilla, which is the, the white color that, that borders around all the squares and it also connects them. So you're going to need five balls, five 50 gram balls of the Nurturing Fibers um, DK Weight Eco Cotton or the Fusion Cotton. And if you order from Good Loops, Stephanie can help you help you figure this one out. Um, now, you can also use the balls, the 50 gram balls. And you will need nine of them. So you can pick maybe nine different colors or, you know, if you just want one color, you know, just pick nine balls of that particular color or, you know, just or nine of the your favorite colors um, of this particular yarn. 
okay, from, this is using the Good Loops yarn, which I think is the best for this project. Um, now I'm going to give you another, and also the link again is, is in the video description below. There is another yarn option that I can recommend. I think they're shipping now. Um, I actually need to check on that. I'm pretty sure they're shipping again. It's from Knit Picks. It's a cotton uh, yarn called Shine Sport. And I actually have some of that right here. Um, I was working with some last night. Okay, it's 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 called a sport weight, but it's about the same weight as the DK weight of this yarn. This DK weight is, is kind of a lighter version of a DK weight. Now, this yarn is 60% um, Primo, Prima cotton and 40% modal, which is a plant-based, um, it's, it's like a cotton, it, it's very much like a cotton feel and everything. Um, and this is 100 in 10 yards in this. It's a little more of an economical choice, actually. Um, and again, they have a very, a very wide color palette for this yarn as well. So that's another option. Um, I don't have the absolute, well, if you wanted to multiply 27 times 42, that'll give you your yardage for the color portion. Although if you pick a multiple of colors you might want to have a little bit extra for that and you will need approximately let's see 50 grams yeah I don't know what the yardage is on that but anyway I will I will try to I will try to get more specific and I'll put that information in the video description if you wanted to check back with that later um, so that's that um, and I do have one project coming pick this person's head up here. This hat is coming on Monday. This is called the buttered popcorn hat. And I used just a pom-pom that I had around the house that has a little elastic loop on the bottom. So this, this is coming, this uses the popcorn stitch, the low front ridge, and the arrow stitch. And I just used front post, back post ribbing for the border or the the brim here. So this is coming. Um, the yarn that I used for the original, you know, all this information will be in the video, but this is actually from, um, okay, what's it called? My goodness. Okay. <laughs> Losing vocabulary, guys. This is from the Knit Crate. This is a Knit Crate worsted weight, 100% super wash merino wool. Really nice to work with. Of course, you can use whatever you want. Um, the paint box yarns are really nice for this. Just the um, acrylic worsted weight, if you like acrylics, or you know your Red Heart Super Saver. Um, just just whatever you got around the house, you know you know what to do and how to do it. So, okay, well let me let me just check to see if there are any more any more. Oh, this is funny. Jan says I'll adopt your dolls. Ah, <laughs> uh, I. I I really don't know what to do with these dolls, guys. They are really, really nice dolls. Excellent condition. Beautiful. My mom has about a hundred of them. And you can imagine, it's a storage time problem. I just don't know how to get them out there. It'd be nice to sell them because obviously to give them away, it's going to cost me some, some bucks to ship these things out. I just don't know what to do with them. If anybody has suggestions, you know, email me, please. I, you know, I, I would love, love to know. Um, what to do. Okay, I have a note here from Angel. It says, I've been watching your videos for a while and I'm really learning a lot and enjoying them. Well, great. This is my first time catching you live. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. That's really kind of you. And it looks like Esther is in the chat. Hi, Esther. Please give Joseph a hug for me. Um, yeah, somebody was asking, this is, yeah, the, the blanket I was talking about. That's for the Bonnie Bay Bon Bon blanket. Um, and I have Corinna, from, says I'm from Argentina, but I'm living in Mexico City. Come here. We practice a lot. That's one of the reasons I love to stay at home. Hi, Corinna. Thank you for joining us. Um, I've been to Mexico City back when I was in high school. <laughs> Our high school marching band went there, and it was a wonderful, memorable trip. I believe 
was that my senior year? I don't remember, but we went, it wasn't my senior year. I think it was. Yeah, it was my senior year in high school. It was great. Um, and Crochet Mama says, I made two of your face masks. They are comfortable and easy to crochet. Also sew two of them from an old curtain fabrics. Yep. You can that 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 you can make these things out of anything. And like I say, argue with whether it's an it's definitely not an N95 mask, but you know what? They are required by law right now where I am living, so um okay okay um let's see love your shawl what's the pattern you know this this pattern um this shawl is actually i think it's the celtic diamond the celtic diamond wrap i believe is what it's called i'm sorry i can't remember them exactly i i've got a couple hundred patterns out there and I get confused sometimes, but um, this is actually on my channel. If you go to my home page, and you'll see a really nice, pretty, young-looking girl with a hat wearing it, and there's a complete video tutorial. Um, the pattern is not free, however. That's actually available through Annie's, because this is one of those designs that I actually sold to them for publication. But um, if you get the Crochet World magazine, um, you probably already have the pattern. Okay, it was actually published two different times over the years, one in a different style yarn, and then this in um, this is actually using the the Red Heart Chic Sheep wool. It's 100% wool, and it feels really nice right now since I have the heat off in my house. Um, but the great thing about the wool, as you probably all know, is that it doesn't heat you up in the same way that acrylic does. It has a breathable property. Uh, which is another reason why, um, with these masks, why cotton is recommended. Um, because even though it's a mask, you still need some breathability there or you can suffocate. So that's the other thing. Um, cotton is really good because of the breathability. It tends to be cooler, won't heat you up as much. Um, let me scoot on down here. I'm looking through the comments. Um, I saw Esther's. Okay, Brianna says, I'm a knitter, but I'm trying to get into crochet. Welcome aboard. <laughs> um, I love knitting, but I adore crochet. That's all I can say. I like them both. I love them both, but crochet is, is like breathing to me. And I hope you enjoy it. It, it may give yourself some time as you, as you come on board, Brianna. Um, but hopefully you'll learn to, to, to love it like, like I do. Um, hey, Helen, thanks for your kind comment there. And Charity, it's good to see you in the, in the chat. And Debbie says, greetings from Connecticut. First time being able to catch you live. Stay safe. Thank you. Glad you could join us today. Um, and Regine is here. Oh, I just got a bunch of new comments loading here. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Well, I am not going to get through all of these, obviously, guys. Um, um, cro mm, crochet pink, crochet me pink. Kelly says hands keep going numb. Can't crochet. Oh dear, oh dear, dear, dear. I hope you're not getting carpal tunnel. I get that sometimes too, but I just have to give it a rest and um, come back to it a little bit later, or just give it a minute or two and then pick it up again. But um, hope you're okay. That, that's a common affliction with us crocheters and you know people who use keyboards a lot. Ah, freaking geek. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, she had a glass person decapitated. Ah, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I just got tired of my um, of my styrofoam head. That just looks so awful after a while. And I saw this one at somebody's uh, show, and I thought, oh, I've got to get me one of those. I just need a decent head. You know, every, we all need a good head, right? Um, okay, let's see. I'm just going to scroll on down here, guys. I, I so appreciate you who take the time to post, and I do read these afterwards, I promise. Um, Linda Jones says, I tried three different ways to knit, but the one that feels best to me is the one I've learned to mimic is the way the yarn harlot does, and she is fast. Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. I wonder if she uses um, Continental, Linda. Um, 
And Brat's mom is in the chat. Hello there. She says, I'm late, but here. You're always welcome, no matter what. Now, late or early, whatever. And, um, yeah, Jan. Okay, good, Jan. Just email me. I'll get to that later this afternoon. Um, let's see. She says, I have two left. Crochet me pink. Kelly says, I have two left hands when I tried knitting. I can't use chopsticks either. <laughs> oh, chopsticks are tricky. Um, reminds me of when we went to, uh, to Seoul, Korea last summer for, with our church. Um, they don't just use chopsticks. They use metal round stainless steel chopsticks, which to me are much harder. I can catch the rice between with those wooden ones, you know, that are square, but the, the, um, the shiny circular stainless steel ones, are tricky. Um, it's kind of funny. Yesterday, my daughter Hannah was eating her fruit with um, some of these chopsticks from Seoul, and, um, and and doing quite well. So she's practicing. She really wants to go back and visit the church again there and see all the children that she helped. Um, she can't wait to go back. But sorry about that. You see how my mind works, kind of like a squirrel, <laughs> talking about having two left hands to knitting, and now I've gone to Seoul, Korea already. Uh, anyway. Um, just a, a picture into a somewhat creative mind. It's kind of scary. Um, Freaky Geek says, I tried using chopsticks. They are either way too slippery or they catch the yarn every which way. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, Esther is doing well. And she's wishing us all a happy Easter. Thank you, Esther. We have the grace. I can't even pronounce that. Um, but I'm going to say hi anyway. Um... And Sue is in the, in the chat. Hey, Sue. Um, and let's see, we've got some conversations going on there. Okay, Elena Miller says, also a knitter. First, a knitter since the mid-1980s. Just became a crocheter several years ago. As one morning, as soon as I awoke, the Lord told me I was to learn to crochet. Wow. <laughs> that's a first that I've heard that, Elena, but that's cool. Um kind of weird. I had, I had some pretty weird dreams last night, but I won't go there, but, um, wow, that is cool. Um, okay. So, um, so we have Franca in the chat. Hey, Franca. And, um, our Archer and Ace says for carpal tunnel, use lavender orange. Okay. There's some, some medical advice there. I'm not sh sure if that's something that would work for you. Um, that might be a good thing. I think even just the, the massaging, like she's talking about, just the massaging I've heard can help a lot and just trying to, to, to loosen that up a bit. And we have Jane from Massachusetts. Good Friday to you too, Jane. And Dusty Cat and Franca. Um, says, I can knit but never use chopsticks. Yeah, I've never never thought of doing that. Um, I have a really nice set from Knit Picks that I absolutely love, and so I just stick with that. And we have, um, yeah, I love loopy crochet and treasure says I squirrel all the time. Oh, let me tell you, I, that's probably why my house doesn't get clean, guys. It's all these squirrels running through my brain. Ideas, you know, got to run to the next thing. Um, we have Sharon Miller. So, Hi, I'm from South Africa. I love your work. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, if you get a chance, go visit. Uh, I don't know where you are in South Africa. If you're in um, Pretoria at all, there's a great store there. Um, I think it's called the yarn shop. Um, and my friend Jennifer, um, owns that shop and, um, look her up if you're anywhere near there. Um, Margaret Taylor says, hi, Bonnie, Maggie here in Silver Spring, Silver Spring. Yes. Maryland. I have a farm in Flintstone and it's near Cumberland, Maryland. Haven't been able to go shut in. Oh dear. I hope you're okay, Margaret. Um, and Jenna, have charity. Hello, Charity, and um, Jessica Sanders from Alaska, and um, thank you, Archer Nace, um, and let's see, can you show, oh, Wanda, Wanda, hey, Wanda, my, fr my friend there, let me see, I do have some needles here, wants to, Wanda wants to see my needles, and I, of course, I had them stored away right there on the floor, <laughs> um, let's see. I have a complete set in this nice little pouch of, of the different sizes. And these are 
Let me show you. These are my circular needles. Um, they're all they're connected with this this um, thing that's interchangeable. I can I can unscrew them and and change to a different size. I can change to a smaller or a larger wire, whatever I want to do. But these are the ones that I like, and they're very smooth and very nice, and they're wood, and I. They don't make a lot of noise. I don't like the scraping metal sound of the metal ones at all. So these wood are really nice. And they have these from Knit Picks. Um, I do have a, a, I think I have a link to the Knit Picks channel, or you can just, or to their, their um, site, but um, you can just look it up by just Googling Knit Picks. And they've got a whole bunch of needles. And they have crochet hooks too, but um, I, I'm such a Susan Bates girl that, I did order some of their their crochet hooks, and they're beautiful. They're fabulous to look at, but I can't do a thing with them. That's just me, though. I mean, you all might love them. I, you know, if it's not a Susan Bates, I'm I'm stuck in the molasses swamp. So um, that's just me. Um, let's see, Wanda. I hope you're doing well. I think of you often every time I see someone bringing a delivery to to help us. Uh, I really do. You all pray for Wanda too. She's out there. She's a uh, she's by herself. Um, um, she's a truck driver, and she's keeping us all fed so and, and keeping those supplies going. So thank you, thank you, Wanda. Um, yes, Sheila says, she crocheted a lot the other day. Now my elbow hurts. Anyone else have that issue? Yes, Sheila, I have gotten repetitive, in, repetitive motion injuries in my arms, and the remedy for that is you just have to stop crocheting for a while. I would just suggest maybe set a timer and just limit your addiction, so to speak. I have, I'm speaking to myself as I say this to you. I have to limit how much time I do this because I would want to just do it constantly. Um, I have to just stop because uh, I can't hurt. You can't hurt yourself, so you don't want to do that. that. I think that was for knitting too. Any Anything with a repetitive motion. Um, let's see. Um, it says, Love Your Shawl, is the pattern published? Yes, Jane, th this pattern is, is published, but the free video tutorials are also on this channel. It's the Celtic Diamond, the Celtic Diamond Wrap, I believe is what it's called. And all the information is in the video description to get the pattern. It was published in Crochet World Magazine about a year ago, I think. Um, let's see. Uh, it is three minutes before one o'clock here on the East Coast, which means I'm going to try to wind down a bit here. Um, yeah, Wanda says that she likes Susan Bates also. Yeah, I, that I, you know, I've tried the other kind, the tapered needles and or hooks, and I can crochet with them, but I have to really concentrate and slow down to do it. I much rather fly with a Susan Bates um, hook in my hand. She says, I need to get me some knitting needles. This is Tanya. Um, need to get some knitting needle, some knitting hooks, but I don't know where to even start. I'm not sure what you're looking for. Some some knitting, you want to do crochet hooks? If you're looking for crochet hooks, um, I think there's a, a link down below to the kind that I like, the soft, I don't even have one to show you now, but the soft Susan Bates hooks are my favorite that will have like a black handle that's I haven't I haven't found anything better than that on the market and I have tried many um, I mean they're like three dollars or less like in US dollars I mean you can't beat it they're, they're great um, yeah Jan says I, I know what you mean I love the look of furl hooks but I can't use them yeah somebody graciously gave me a couple they're beautiful fabulous wonderful looking hooks I can't do a thing with them when it comes to actually crocheting. So, um, you know, maybe some of you do. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, diss anything that somebody else loves. I mean, some of you can probably do lots with these things, and if you can, more power to you. It's just like shoes. You know, there's certain shoes for certain feet. I think that's probably what it is. And um, there's just certain things that I just don't do, and certain things that I can't live without. And Susan Bates hooks or on that list. I can't live without those. Um, okay, I do have a question. Okay, let, let's do the question. Uh, da, da, da. See, Brianna says that um, her dad is a UPS driver, praying for you all. Brianna, tell your dad thank you. <laughs> um, they come by our house a lot here. Um, Emily wants to know, is it possible to make a throw with many different reversible stitches? I'm sure it is. Um, it, 
someone just needs to design something like that, um, yeah, maybe that's something you can give a try, Emmeline. Um, let's see. I'm really trying to get through any of these questions here. I don't want to leave any of these hangings. Okay, Debbie says, quick crochet question for anyone. What is the best way to weave in ends when using bulky number six yarn? I made a baby blanket yesterday and need to weave in the ends. Uh, I would still just use a, a yarn needle. I mean, you should still be able to get the bulky weight through the yarn needle. I, I, I would just try that first. I, I leave a good long, you know, leave, leave a little bit extra on that thicker yarn if you can. I know that's tough because um, you have smaller yardage amounts in those scans, but um, that, that would be my first try. Um, let me see. Okay, well, I am going to just, um, it is now one o'clock, and I, I wanted to read some things to you because after all, today is, is Good Friday. And I wanted to read a couple of quotes from a couple of my favorite pastors. One is living. Um, one gentleman has been with the Lord for more than 100 years. I love Charles Spurgeon, as you all know. Um, but I wanted to read you first a quote from John Packer. He's actually a, a pastor, uh, I believe, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And he says, The highest act of love is the giving of the best gift. And as crocheters, you know all about this. And if necessary, at the greatest cost. To the least deserving. That's what God did. At the loss of his son's life, to the totally undeserving. That'd be me. God gave the best gift. The display of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So, phew, that's really good. Um... And I want to read, too, from Charles Spurgeon before we go. Charles Spurgeon says, or said, We Christians do not believe that Jesus Christ was the only one that ever rose from the dead. We believe that every deathbed is a resurrection, that from every grave the stone is rolled away. Wow. And again, this is, this is for those who are in Christ. Okay, this is not everybody. These are for those who are believers in Jesus Christ, who believe, as John Piper said, that he is their atonement, paying their price. You know, like the, the little comic I showed you, because um, he was our substitute. And another, another quote from Charles Spurgeon. And, and these, these first few words are actually names of characters, and it reminded me of um, the story. Um, well, anyway, so these are the names of the people he talks about. Ready to halt, poor fearing, and thou, Mrs. Despondency, and much afraid. Go often there to the empty tomb. Let it be your favorite haunt. There, build a tabernacle, there abide and often say to your heart when you are in distress and sorrow come see the place where the lord lay oh i hope that blesses you because as you all know the tomb was empty on easter morning so you know even though today is kind of a somber remembrance of what happened with the crucifixion Sunday is coming and what's really cool is that we don't have to wait for the calendar year or the moon cycle each year in the spring to celebrate we can celebrate this every single day and on that note I'm just going to wish you all a very happy Easter and God's blessings and have a wonderful week bye bye <music>